In this lesson, we are going to see a couple of techniques of how we can use with GenAI in .NET. The main idea will, will be around how we can, in example, access models, create chats, do vision activities, and more. And how we can use frameworks and tools like Semantic Kernel, Microsoft Extension for AI, Vector Database, and more in order to do this. So let's start. Like in example, depending on the type of models, there, is a, there are scenarios where we may need to connect our models to external systems. And there are different ways to do this. One of the ways that we have is using Semantic Kernel and using what we call plugins or functions. And the whole idea, if we use semantic kernels, and this works not in all models, but all, in example, GPT-4 models are supported here, is that we can create plugins. And we have here a very simple plugin that is called Get City Temperature. It receives a city name as part of the, the input, and it's going to generate some outputs in the console, generate a random temperature between minus C, minus 10 degrees Celsius and 10 degrees Celsius, and then the message is going to say that current temperature is like this. And the whole idea here that we have in this program is that when we create the chat, and we are going to use a GPT-4 O mini model here, we are going to add this plugin to the semantic kernel. So we can add this plugin, but this is a great scenario to see if we want to connect external systems and we want to be part of a chat conversation example, we can do this. So we connect this and then we have the same, literally the same code that we have before. The only extra option that we have here is that when we do the chat, when we start with the chat, we define that in this scenario, semantic kernel, the kernel will automatically define, if uh, automatically identify if someone has a question, so like in example, what is the temperature in Toronto? Let's ask that one. It's going to call this function. So let's run this again to have a sample here. So can you solve 2 plus 2? Of course, 2 plus 2 equals 4. Perfect. We have there. What is the current weather in Sao Paulo? And important, I didn't ask for the temperature here. I asked for the weather. And we see that we have the function start. We have the city Sao Paulo, we have the generated message, it's mine of eight, and the response is, wow, it seems like Sao Paulo is experiencing some serious chill, it's current bone, bone chilling. And because we are working with large language models, and the models are powerful working in example with different languages, we can ask the same questions once again in Spanish, and the model will understand that in the context of this question, we want to know the temperature or the weather in a city, and it's going to call the function. And this is one of the most, one of the super cool, interesting things that we have. What is the temperature in Madrid? We see that it's called the function call, generates 8 degrees Celsius, and then we have the response also in Spanish, because remember, these are models we are trying to complete the next sentence, and because the answer, I'm sorry, because the question, it was in Spanish, is going to complete, and the completion will set define that, hey, the response needs to be in Spanish. We can define that always applies in English using the system prompts. But using plugins is a great way if you want to call an external system, a local, a third-party system, a, a search engine, or any other parties that we have here, we can do this.